Father Marcus. What do you want? I was told you were an exorcist. Who exactly told you that? Does, does it matter? Yeah, I think it does. You can expect a lot of scary stuff. And if you're a fan of the original movie, you will be a fan of our show. And if you like horror and sci-fi, I think you'll I think you'll like and Alfonso Herrera. <laughs> you, you like it. My character, so I play Casey Rance. She's sort of the wallflower of the family. And in the pilot, no one's really concerned with her because my sister Brienne is she's been through a lot and the family's kind of got all their attention on her. But my character has her own problems. And that they show up in the end. <laughs> Well, I think we're taking the aspects of the old movie that people loved and were inspired by those things, and we're not doing away with it. Like, that still takes place, and it's in that universe, and we're just, what happened 20 years later? You know, we're just adding to it, and hopefully, yeah, people love it. <laughs> Hi, make sure you watch The Exorcist on Fox, September 23rd. I think it's in Spain that, ti that time, too, around that time. <laughs> Tú interpretas a un padre más moderno y más actual, ¿no? más progresista, según tengo entendido. De alguna forma, sí. El, eh, el padre Tomás vive en Chicago, que es una comunidad donde vive una inmensa cantidad, una inmensa comunidad latina. Eh, es un padre con raíces mexicanas que está en los suburbios de Chicago, tiene una congregación bastante fiel, eh, lo siguen bastante y... Ocurre una situación bastante peculiar que, con el personaje de Gina Davis que llega con él y trata de pedirle ayuda y este pequeño evento va a cambiar su vida por completo y obviamente eso hará que él tenga que exorcizar no solamente situaciones y espíritus que están allá afuera sino también que tendrá que exorcizar ciertos demonios que él posee dentro de él que no tienen nada que ver con espíritus malignos ni nada sino con su pasado. Vale, ¿y cuáles crees que son las principales diferencias entre la película del 70 y algo y la serie actual? Eh, es una... No es un remake. Estamos partiendo con algo totalmente nuevo. Sin embargo, es que hubiera pasado 40 años después y hay ciertos guiños de, de la película, pero lo hace de manera muy inteligente. El trabajo de Jeremy Slater, el escritor, lo hizo brutal. Te voy a ser muy honesto, cuando yo me dijeron, bueno, vamos a ser el, el exorcista para televisión, yo al principio tuve como mucha precaución y dije, bueno, ¿cómo te vas a meter con un film tan importante, con una película tan importante? Y definitivamente después de leer el piloto, pues eh, fue muy fácil decir que sí. Y bueno, como hemos dicho, tú eres el padre progresista y moderno, pero pues, luego está el otro padre que es el más tradicional y demás. ¿Crees que vuestros dos personajes llegarán a entenderse? Que ¿Tendrán algo en común al final? Esa es gran parte, esa es gran parte la, la historia en sí. Son dos energías, son dos entidades, dos espíritus, dos cuerpos totalmente diferentes que tendrán que convivir para poder llegar a un objetivo en común. Pues no se pierdan El Exorcista el 23 de septiembre en los Estados Unidos y no se pierdan El Elegido que se va a estrenar en España el 2 de septiembre, así que no se lo pierdan porque ya muy pronto es el estreno del Elegido en España. Gracias. I'm not a crazy person. I'm, I'm not saying you're crazy. I'm... There is something inside my house. It's a demon. Angela, demons aren't real. They are metaphors. It's trying to take my daughter. You're being manipulated by forces you can't even begin to understand. Father Tomas, the rising star. I think God spoke to me today. What did he say? He said, I want you to help his family. Anybody up there? Oh, so, well, I think that the first question is the obvious one is why? Sure. Uh, it, that was my question too when when they uh, when they pitched it to me because I said my my response was I shouldn't do that and you shouldn't either. Um, the Exorcist is is not only one of the scariest movies ever made; it's one of the best movies ever made. So it's incredibly large shoes to fill, um, and the idea of rebooting it and and doing just kind of a straight remake of that exact same story uh, it felt like such a mistake because you're never going to do that story better. Uh, you're only going to do it longer, um, and so. 
And so I originally kind of passed on the idea when I first heard it, and it wasn't until, it wasn't until I started really thinking about the idea and saying, um, you know what, telling the same story, that doesn't interest me, um, but telling a similar story in the same world is exciting. Um, this, was, this was before the TV show Fargo existed, but it's, it's kind of the same approach where, as Fargo, where it's, it's a story set in the same universe as the original Exorcist film. So we're not remaking it, we're not rebooting it, we're not saying that film didn't exist. Um, so it's a brand new story with brand new characters, but hopefully, if you're a fan of, of the original film um, or the novel, hopefully you'll find a lot to like here. Uh, the first season is very much about the possession of, of uh, a, a pretty normal American teenager. It takes place in Chicago, um, and it's, it's really a normal American family that's kind of being beset by these uh, really terrifying supernatural forces. Um, and two very different priests from different parts of the world are kind of thrust together to save this, uh, this one girl um, and to save this family. And, and ultimately, as the season goes on, it starts as, as a, a small, simple case of demonic possession. And hopefully, as the season goes on, you'll start to realize that there's something much larger at work here, that evil has a larger ambition. Um, and Because we are really trying to, to build a, a, a rich and compelling mythology um, like Lost, like Battlestar Galactica, all the shows that I grew up with that, that are in my DNA um, that hopefully... Hopefully we can tell a very focused, very contained story in this first season, um, but, then, but then building in a jumping off point of where we could take the show in the future. Sure. Oh, I hope so. Uh, yeah, we, we've got 10 episodes uh, this first season. It, it debuts uh, September 23rd on Fox, um, Friday nights. And so, yeah, if, if, you, like horror, uh, if you like horror shows... Um, Please know that this is a show being made by horror fans for horror fans. Um, it's, it's a rich psychological thriller, and uh, I, nothing would make me happier than running for, for several seasons and, and getting to continue to work with these wonderful actors and, and talented writers. Um, this is Jeremy Slater, the, the creator and executive producer of The Exorcist. Uh, please watch us. We're on, I don't know where, where, what we're airing on in Spain, but in Fox, or in America, we're on Fox Friday nights starting September 23rd. Um, it's, it's hopefully uh, going to be a really scary, really fun, propulsive, thrilling show. Uh, and we hope you check it out. So it's based on the movie The Exorcist, of course, uh, but it takes place, uh, you know, decades later. But we acknowledge that that, that happened. It's the same world. And, but uh-oh, now it's happening again, what's going on? And uh, it's very scary. It's really, uh, it's very cinematic, the, the TV show, and uh, spooky. I am the mom of a family that gets uh, affected by uh, possession, and uh, uh, we're not quite sure what's gonna happen or what's going on in the pilot, but, um, but my character, I'm very sure something is going on, and I, I'm the one who finds a priest to help us out. Hey to all my fans in Spain, I really want you to watch my new show, The Exorcist. It's really scary. You're afraid? Yeah, you should be too. Look upon me, Marcus. <laughs> Thank you.